Hey everybody, this is Alan Belmiak on the exhibit hall floor of PTC User 2010 in Orlando, Florida. And I'm sitting with Paul Hamilton at the Co-Create Explicit Modeling booth. And Paul's going to take a few minutes, a few seconds rather, and show us uh, some of the items that Brian Shepard touched upon in the keynote uh, presentation on Sunday. And we're going to look at how the explicit modeling uh, either is similar to or differs from uh, some of the parametric history-based modeling of Pro and Junior. So Paul, why don't you show us what you have? So Brian talked specifically about three challenges, interoperability, ease of use, and large assemblies. So what you see on the screen here is a large assembly from one of, a, one of the companies that uses CoCreate. This okay. assembly has 30,000 parts in it, and I just loaded it up. It took about 50 seconds to load. And there's just a, a lot of detail in this, and this is something that's uh, quite uh, easy to do with, with uh, explicit or direct model. Great. All of these parts are valid, solid models that we can edit anytime we want to with, uh, with direct editing. Mm -hmm. Here you can kind of see the scale and size of this machine. And um, you can see some of the detail as we zoom in here. Um, even springs and clips, you can see dimensions and GD&T. Wow. This, this particular assembly, this part here, is a, is a sheet metal part, for example. And, and it's an intelligent sheet metal part. We can unfold it. And uh, here you can just see a quick unfold. So we just did an unfold on that sheet metal part right in the context of 30,000 parts. Um, wow. So uh, large assembly modeling is just a real sweet spot for, uh, for explicit direct editing um, and modeling. And um, again, all of these parts are, are editable if you uh, if you have permission from the uh, PDM system to mm -hmm. edit it. As a matter of fact, even this uh, this hoist here or this lift, I guess, if we wanted to change the uh, height of this uh, lift, we could just uh, box select all of these parts that we want to move. And um, there, you can see I can get them into the box, something like that. And um, so it's going to now ask me how I want to move it, and I want to move it up and into uh, this direction. Let's see. And just give it the direction vector. So we slide these parts up with no indication or no knowledge of how the part was created. But there I just moved 30 or 40 parts, and wow. I also edited the height of the post. Okay. Right? So, yeah. so everything was related, everything was brought together. Um, so, in, in so just a second, you know, just that fast. So what you basically um, kind of communicate, maybe that, I mean, this is an example of a large assembly, but maybe as you're kind of starting off, if you've got an idea how you want a part to look, you can start basically putting digital pen to paper and say, I want to do this, I want to do that, and very quickly start moving, moving things in different dimensions, and you really start to get that idea take digital shape right on the screen. Right on the screen. Yep. Uh, that's yep. really cool. Very, okay. very cool stuff. Um, just one other thing on the, uh, there's there's some dimensions and a lot of characteristics on this. These parts can all be edited if I just created this block and wanted to change the radius of this thing. You just oh, grab wow. it, change it, um, and that changed all of those parts because they're the same part. Huh. If you wanted to drive something via dimension, you could just click on that dimension. And... Um, Oh, and just drag it one way or the other? And it will uh, allow you to change that dimension, take just a bit here, but now it's modifying the position of those parts, all in the context of this, this large assembly. So.